have you ever worried about your credit score? I'm talking to the point where even thinking about the last time you checked it gets you worked up. A good score, we all know, is tied to a lot of things in our lives, so it's only natural to worry about it. But has this fixation become a dangerous and weaponized one? Well, our next guest has the answer, Emily Stewart. She is a senior correspondent for Business Insider, and she joins us now to talk about the topic. Emily, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you have a phrase, or a description rather, for this phenomenon that I have never heard before. You say it's a weapon of mass seduction. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, I think, you know, I used you got at credit scores, obviously, are quite nerve-wracking. You need it to get a house, obviously, to get an apartment, you know, a million things. I mean, it even goes into your car insurance. And, you know, I think a lot of companies also know that we are anxious about our credit scores. And so they offer us all sorts of services to, you know, to look at our reports or to fix our reports or to monitor our credit scores. And I think one question I came in having to you know, why I was reporting this story is like, hey, do I need all of this stuff? Do I really need to be giving somebody $25 a month to keep an eye on my credit? Or is that something where maybe a company is taking advantage of, of my, my real anxieties about this? Now, speaking of taking advantage of anxiety, is this a big business for companies to give us products that will help kind of ease us into this even more to keep us surrounding our credit score? Yeah, it is a big business. So the credit monitoring and identity theft industry is worth about $5 billion. So it's a lot of money. And if you think about it, you know, the way I came into this story was I was reporting on Experian, which is one of um, the big credit bureaus earlier this year. And I signed up for an account just in my reporting and I started to get all of these emails from them saying I had a credit alert and this and that. And when I would click through, what it would tell me is it would offer me this credit monitoring service. And it did a bunch of different things for about $25 a month. And so I decided to reach out to some consumer advocates and say, hey, do I need this? And this is just one example. And you know what they said was that in credit monitoring, really from anyone is something that people really do want to think about. Most uh, identity theft takes place on existing accounts. So basically somebody gets a hold of your credit card number or gets a hold of your credit card and, and credit monitoring is not going to catch that. Or maybe somebody does steal your identity. It tells you after the fact and that's not super helpful. And so what a lot of these consumer advocates will say is it's pretty ineffective and it's, and it's expensive for a service that you're not going to you know, really necessarily benefit from. And it's important to remember that if you are worried about your identity being stolen, you can freeze your credit for free. And in the age of data breaches, I don't think it's a bad idea for a lot of people to do that. A lot of great information there. One more question, Emily, before we go. Big no-nos when it comes to dealing with credit score companies? I mean, I heard from a lot of people that credit repair is generally probably a bad idea. And that's where you pay somebody to dispute all of these negative items on your credit report. Um, and ideally, that means they're just disputing mistakes, but a lot of the times these companies will dispute everything negative. And unfortunately, sometimes the negative stuff is you, and then you wind up without a lot of money and with no benefit. And I do think, you know, there's a sense of, you know, you don't want to bury your head in the sand, but I think you can relax a little bit. You can access your credit report now for free every week if you want. And I don't think you should do it every week because you might drive yourself a little nuts, but maybe treat it like your 401k, right? Like maybe check once a quarter or once a month to just kind of see what's going on. But, you know, one person kind of put it to me, this isn't your SAT score and maybe just relax a little bit and don't get so worked up about it. Emily, lots of great information here, of course. We'll continue to talk about credit scores and different resources surrounding it. So we can't wait to have you back for that. Thanks so much for joining us this morning.